really not many people do this. Only about 10% of people that we've interviewed even really know anything about the business or have any any knowledge about what we do mm-hmm. or checked out any of our social media or read about us. Right. Yeah. And it's easy stuff to do. I mean, we're all on social media. Like, go to a website and just do some reading. It doesn't have to be anything super in-depth, but like if we're looking for a particular position, it's pretty easy on our social media to figure out, okay, well, how does this position fit into what they do? I mean, if you're going to be helping us on our YouTube channel and then you come in and, and say, so what is your YouTube channel about? What kind of content do you make? It's like you really are applying for a job helping our YouTube channel and you didn't even go look at it. Like that's, that's scary. We believe that you are strong by design and you were made in God's image to have a strong body, mind, and spirit. You're listening to the number one strength and health authority podcast in the world. So let's get ready to unlock your potential and transform your life in today's episode. Hi, and welcome to the Strong by Design podcast. My name's Mike Westerdahl, and I'm your host today. I'm with Miss Samantha Harrison Hello. from the Team Critical Bench. She's our amazing A plus player, executive assistant, Amazon director, slash wears a lot of hats here, does a lot of things, and she's going to be joining the conversation today. Cool. Yeah. Be here. Well, right now we're in the middle of a pretty big interview process, hiring some new people here. Yep. And we've been kind of ranting to each other or venting to each other lately about some of the really common mistakes people make in the interview process. Yeah. Like really, really simple stuff. Things that are seem like common sense, but common sense isn't so common today. So we're going to crank through these 10 mistakes that candidates make during the interview process. Let's do it. All right. You want to start us off with number one? Sure. Don't mass apply. Also, read and follow instructions. Um, we've... We kind of have a caveat of, you know, if you don't have a cover letter with your application, like you're automatically declined. Right. It's just yeah. read the whole thing, follow all the directions. I know cover letters aren't fun, but like there's a reason for them. And um, it's really just kind of for us, it's just, can you follow directions? All right. Either you check that box or you don't. Right. It's just some attention to detail. So we have a five-step interview process. We're going to do a whole different podcast on how that looks. If you're an employer and looking to streamline your interview process on how to hire A-plus talent, we'll go through that a different time. Today's more helping people that are applying, candidates that are looking for a job, how to interview better, just coming from the employer's point of view. But Mm -hmm. real quickly, we do have a five-step process. Um, First step, we post the job on places like Indeed.com, and there's some instructions for applying for the job. And that's what Samantha was just talking about with the don't apply, but don't mass apply. Mass apply means don't just send the same cover letter or lack thereof or same resume just to every job without really even reading it or looking what the job is. You just kind of hit apply, 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 Mm -hmm. and just go through and apply to like 30 or 40 jobs a night just because they look interesting. But you didn't really read what the job description uh, or the details of the job were asking for. So our step one is to apply through there. We go through the resume, see who followed instructions, who's got the job qualifications and the experience. And then they get scheduled for a phone screening interview. Um, what happens there is you, it's quick. It's like a 15, 20 minute thing. And it's like five questions. And really, we're just seeing who, who shows up on time. Step two, they come in house and they have um, an interview with two people. And that's step two. And that's um, kind of going through looking for patterns in their work history, how long they've been at different jobs. And if there's any types of patterns that go through, if they think they're a good fit for the job. Step three. They wind up uh, meeting with me, and I go more over outcomes for the job and whether they fit the company culture, talk more about company vision, see if they fit in here, and if they've shown a track record of being able to um, produce the results that we're looking for. Then we have, um, I think we're only on step four. Maybe we have a four-step interview. 
if we do, but we have some tests in between. So it depends mm -hmm. on the job. It's different per job. But usually if they get past me, next we give them some sort of an assignment or test as like a project, a paid project, just to kind of test them out and see how they do. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of smooth talkers. It doesn't always mean you can do what you say you can do. Mm -hmm. And then the last step is to take them out to a dinner interview. So real quick, that's our five-step process. And there's little tests and things that we look for along the way. But today we're going over these 10 things. The first one we just talked about, don't mass apply read the actual job description there's probably going to be something in there that's specific and we know if you just hit apply and didn't even like really look at it so in ours we say please the last sentence in the thing says please include a cover letter or you're automatically eliminated and mm -hmm. your your resume will be tossed so we wrote down half the people yep. so we've had hundreds of people apply for this job that we just posted half of them we don't even look at because mm -hmm. there was no cover letter. Right. It's like the easiest thing to just follow the directions and include the cover letter. Right. Which then leads to mistake number two. Don't have, don't have that generic cover letter that's the same for every company you apply for. Customize it. We're not talking write a whole brand new thing and research completely every company just because you applied before you even have an interview. Right. But at least customize it with the company name, something in your experience that has to do with something they do, something you like about them, mm -hmm. just something. Right. And we wrote down here that only 25% of the people actually do that. Otherwise, you can just tell. This is the same exact cover letter that went out to every single job they apply for right. across every industry. Right. Yep. What would you say number three is? Number three, be on time. Also, um, you know, be early, ideally. Um, we have a lot of people who show up, you know, a minute late or five minutes late. We had some people show up 40 minutes late. Like, just be early. Know where you're going ahead of time. Make sure you have gas in your car. Make sure you have everything that you need in order to get to where you need to be early. Very early. Yeah. <laughs> so... I remember in after college when I was applying, I would drive to the place the night before just to make sure I knew where I was going, mm -hmm. just to be like extra prepared. But give yourself some extra time. There could be some traffic that you're not used to. Right. You know, um, maybe it's a little tricky finding the building. Like right. we give specific instructions, but still, you're, you might take a couple wrong turns and have to do a U-turn or get stuck at another light. What What's the big problem if you get there a little early? Go get a coffee or something after you found the place. Right. Like, just get there early. And then some people really just like, what's the big deal? Mm -hmm. Well, the, the big deal is just respect for other people's time. And this isn't a trick. We put in our process, be on time, because it's one of our uh, values that we don't deviate from. Mm -hmm. So being a minute late or five or more automatically eliminates people uh, from the job. So right. it's just super important to, to be on time. And maybe for some businesses or companies, it's not a big deal. But I'm telling you, for most people, it, it's, a, it's a lack of respect. It's a lack of planning. Also, this is like the dating phase. You're showing up for an interview. This is probably the best it's going to get. Mm -hmm. So if you're already late the first time we met, I'm pretty much thinking it's just going to be downhill from there. Right. You're going to get comfortable and slide more and being late for meetings, holding people up, right. wasting people's time. Right. So for us, that's a huge flag. And I think it's the same for, for a lot of people. So give yourself the extra time, plan for gas, find the building, give yourself extra time to get ready mm -hmm. and just get there early. Yep. Even for us, one minute and, it, and it's still a no go. Yep. All right. Number four. We've got, before you get there for your first in-person interview, do a little bit of research on the company. And we found that um, really not many people do this. Only about 10% of people that we've interviewed even really know anything about the business or have any, any knowledge about what we do mm -hmm. or checked out any of our social media or read about us. Right. Yeah, and it's easy stuff to do. I mean, we're all on social media. Like, just check out a new page. <laughs> Go to a website and just do some reading. It doesn't have to be anything super in-depth, but, like, know a little bit about, like, if we're looking for a particular position, it's pretty easy on our social media to figure out, okay, well, how does this position fit into what they do? Just kind of just... Any kind of research is better than, so what kind of stuff do you guys do here? What kind of, you know, whatever am I going to be doing? Like, 
you could have answered your own question and come in with some basic knowledge and then talk to us as your interviewers about the knowledge that you bring based on, you know, I saw that you guys do this kind of thing. Here's what I've done in that same arena. And here's how I can help you make this better. Or here's how we can work together to, you know, move the company forward. Exactly. And it leads right into the next one, because Mm -hmm. um, if you've done your research, you're probably going to have some intelligent questions to ask where it comes across a little funny when the interviewer is doing most of the talking and explaining. And then when it's your turn for some questions and you're like, nope, pretty much covers everything. Mm-hmm. I know from your guys' point of view, it's like the, <laughs> the bad question from not doing research. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you're going to be helping us on our YouTube channel and then you come in and, and say, so what is your YouTube channel about? What kind of content do you make? It's like you really are applying for a job helping our YouTube channel and you didn't even go look at it. Right. Like that's, that's scary. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so have a few good questions prepared. What would you, you, how about you give some examples of uh, some good questions you've gotten and I can share some that I've gotten in my interviews. Well, I rem- remember questions too that I asked when I interviewed here and it was um, questions about the, um, the environment because that was really important to me, like what it felt like to work here and the culture. And also um, like each of the people that I was interviewing with, like what my role with them would be and how much interaction there would be in in that kind of situation. Um, other questions, I mean, aside from the basics, like what does a day in this, you know, job look like? Um, questions about, um, mm, like, like benefits are good questions, um, just for clarification reasons, um, what the hours look like. Um, different kind, pe- different people have different kinds of work styles, you know, talk about those and see, you know, how that fits in with this company, those kinds of yeah. things I would suggest. Those are great questions. And if they've gotten past a few interviews and they're meeting with me, I'm more the, the CEO. So mm-hmm. when they come to me, it's more culture and um, some of our core values and talking about specific outcomes of the, of the job. Mm-hmm. Um you know, I, I go through and explain a lot of this, and, and there's some back and forth, but then I ask them if, if they have any questions. Um, some good questions I've gotten. I've gotten people just be like, nope, I, everything's been answered, and I find that a little, uh, I don't know, mm-hmm. I feel like they should have a, a couple of questions. Right. Even if they've asked them before, you mentioned yesterday, right. like, like just get a different perspective on things. Right. Where um, some good questions I've gotten are when people say, where do you picture the company? Mm-hmm. What are, what's your vision for the future? Wh- where's the company in three years? What are some projects you guys are working on that you're most excited about? That would mm-hmm. be another one. Um, when did you start the company? How did you get into this industry? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, is there uh, room for advancement? Right. You know, what kind of, uh, is there a flexible schedule? Right. Different things like that. I mean, there's so many things you could ask. Mm-hmm. I don't know if people just get nervous and don't want to ask, but. They do. <laughs> they do get nervous. And I'll, I'm going to add another thing to having a few questions prepared. Bring a notepad, like write your questions down ahead of time and bring them with you. You may have more questions that come up, but you're not going to remember them because you don't have anything to write down. One thing I was taught a long time ago in a, a previous position was every meeting you go to, bring a pen and paper because you don't know what you're going to need to remember. You're not going to remember what you were told. Like just always have paper and a pen with you and you'll just kind of always be That's better prepared. <laughs> I pretty That's much, why every time I'm in a meeting, I bring pen and paper. And if somebody like comes here with a pen a meeting, right now. <laughs> if somebody comes with that one, I'm like... I'm like, all right, go get a pen and paper or go get your laptop. Like, you're not going to remember what I'm telling you right now. Right. Yeah. (laughs) No, that's good. I highly recommend that. Yeah, you should totally have that with you. Yeah. Another thing that that happened with you and Chris, people came in and kind of didn't acknowledge both people. They kind Mm -hmm. of focused all their attention on him. Right. You're a little more quieter than he is, and he's more talkative. And I think naturally they're going to maybe focus more in, but there's two people in the interview. Right. Like, pay attention to everybody. Say hello to everybody. Right. This was that first impression thing mm-hmm. where we don't really care what you dress like. You know, I, I don't think you can ever um, be too dressed up. I mean, it's always sure. good to, if you come in in a suit, I'm not going to hold that against you. Right. But, you know, we wear gym shorts and T-shirts a lot here, too. Right. So. Dressed up can be jeans and a t-shirt. Right, exactly. But, but neither, none of us really care. 
but mm -hmm. really it's that first impression, eye contact, firm handshake. Right. Maybe a smile. Like, well, smile well, would act be friendly. Nice. <laughs> right. Even if you're nervous, just plaster it on there. Yeah, just, just put, put a little smirk on your face right, or something. 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 But yeah, I mean, I've had this happen at restaurants before where the waiter was like only speaking to my wife or something. I'm mm -hmm. like, what are you doing? Like, there's two of us here. Right. Are, are you, like, interested in her or something? Like, why are you only talking to her? Right. There's two of us. Right. Like, look at both people. All right, this one, somebody got eliminated for this last week. <laughs> <laughs> and I th and I think it's uh, when people do get nervous, mm -hmm. some of these things come out. So these are just things to be conscious of. And you were the, the master at not doing this one when you went through the interview process. <laughs> but uh, talking too much. These are going to be people that just ramble on and mm -hmm. go off in tangents. You've got a question. Answer that question. That's fine. Be thorough. Tell a story. Do what you need to do. But right. don't go off on a side tangent on a side story that has nothing to do right. with what you're asked. And, and now you're eating up all this time. Mm -hmm. There's usually a time period allotted for these things. And then there's right. someone else coming in. So, yep. And then people feel, I don't know, how did you feel when this happened? Uh, it, it really honestly drained all of my energy and I had like no interest in continuing on with this particular interview. Um, yeah, it's just draining. Like you, you answered the question, but now we're like off 40 years ago into some, you know, distant land that you wandered into. Like, I don't even know what we're talking about anymore. Why are we here? <laughs> right. And we call it, we call it oversharing Yeah. sometimes. And, um, <laughs> Our personalities crazy. are similar. We kind of mm -hmm. get, get drained a little bit by just like too much yeah. talking for no reason about nothing. Right. Yep. <laughs> just like, yep. Especially where there's a purpose to the meeting right. of what you're trying to do. Just trying to stay on track. Yep. It's like the podcast can go off on tangents and somebody's got to get like reeled back in and get right. get back on track. So, you know, go ahead and answer the question, but try not to go off on side tangents or just for you, mm -hmm. um, really everybody just eliminates themselves. Mm -hmm. If you've got a good experience, um, we're not even huge on education. <laughs> it's, it's really just the experience. Right. You've done this before and we kind of like this. People are just eliminating themselves with some of this nonsense we're going through right here mm -hmm. and just like saying dumb things in the interview or saying way too many things. Like you had the answer. It yeah. was good. Mm -hmm. And then you started telling us other problems and issues and drama. Right. And it opens up a whole can of worms. Right. And uh, for those of you, you know, dealing with the police, we love them, but don't start giving them any extra ammunition against you. Right. You know, your dad was, was a lawyer, you told me one time, and mm -hmm. he taught he taught you, uh, answer the question and then stop. Right. <laughs> like, don't well, keep, answer keep... it in as few words as possible and move on. Right. Like, and don't next. start answering things they didn't nope. ask. Nope. And sale, a sales tactic, too, is... Um, you know, the salesperson will present their information and it's really the next person to talk loses. And like, if I'm trying to sell myself to you for a job, like I'm just going to sit here and wait for you to ask your next question because I'm going to lose if I just start talking start and rambling. Start babbling. <laughs> yeah. waiting, waiting on you. Like you. I, I, I you remember know? we were like, we're like, she's kind of quiet, but she's smart. Like she, she didn't say any, there was zero flags with you. There was nothing <laughs> like, there was nothing like, well, she said this weird thing or she kind of mentioned this or I think she might be moving soon or I think there's drama at home. Mm -hmm. Like there was like, you just answered the questions, kind of stayed quiet, but we're nice and friendly. And we're mm -hmm. just like, she, she just never did anything to get eliminated and wound up like being like the finalist. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of the point of this is like. <laughs> right. All you have to do is not screw up mm -hmm. and you're going to, you don't even have to be, and you are great. I'm not talking about you, but sure. you don't have to be great to, to become into the final round of like the last five people mm -hmm. out of hundreds. All you got to do is follow some of these basic tips that we're sharing with you today. Right. It's like to be amazing. All you have to do is not suck. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. This one, I mean, you would totally think this is common sense, right? right? But maybe you have to make a conscious effort of it because you're nervous. But you can't come in low energy mm -hmm. with no smile, at not really showing any interest or passion right. in what in the work. 
and what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. It's really not what we're looking for here as somebody to kind of come in and punch the clock and get paid and, and just show up because they have to go to work because they have right. to pay their bills. You know, that's not very motivating for us to, to bring that into our culture. Right. <laughs> so, so yeah, just fake a smile mm -hmm. and try to, try to be upbeat right. and, uh, show some interest in the position and that you have passion for what you do right. for your work. Right. Absolutely. Be excited, right? Yep. hundred percent. All right. What's the one question that we ask that has a very high percentage chance of people just kind of uh, divulging the wrong information that mm -hmm. sends up a red flag? The, where do you see yourself in five years? This yeah. gets a lot of different answers. It does. And it's one that you um, might want to think about this one before you go in. It's a pretty common one, I think. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're trying to figure out, um, do you have any ambition? Mm -hmm. Like, are you looking to kind of start at this position, but you'd like to, you know, kind of move up in the in the company? Are you looking for more responsibility? Are you looking to grow and, mm -hmm. and learn? Or, you know, is this exactly what you want to do and you'll be happy staying in this spot forever? Mm -hmm. Or... Or are you just using this for some some other scheme you've got in mind? Right. <laughs> so right. the 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 answer that really throws us for a loop are when people say, "Oh, in five years, I'll I'll be moving to Texas and running my own t-shirt company, and my mm -hmm. husband will be out of the military, and we're planning on going here." And I'm like, "Okay, so you want us to hire you, spend all our time and resources and money on training you up, teach you how to do the job, and then right by the time you're." finally like profitable mm -hmm. for us now now you're done and you're already got it planned out that you're moving right and doing this other thing right like cool story bro okay. <laughs> next <laughs> right so i think the way if i remember correctly the way you answered it was was really good saying because you got hired initially as an executive assistant mm -hmm. which is still your official job title but we don't really care about the job titles i'm like do you want to change it do you want to be <laughs> Something else, <laughs> you're like, you're like it's fine. fine. <laughs> but you do a lot of other things here as mm -hmm. well. And um, you, all the different projects we've given you, you tackle them and do a great job. So, you know, more and more responsibility comes your way. But um, I think you said, you know, I'm looking to like do really well at the position I'm given, but looking for new growth opportunities. If there's a need, how I can help out or take on, take on new areas or mm -hmm. projects. So it's like showing that you're going to do the best job you can at this position. But if there's new things that open up that, that could be potential, you're interested in exploring, growing and learning in those areas sure. as well. Yep. If the need arises. Right. So we've been seeing a lot of like, I just want to like get a job to retire in. Mm -hmm. I want to, I don't know. Yeah. What other What other ones have you heard that are kind of scary? It's mostly plans of being somewhere else, not yeah, working here. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like, I like this, but here's what I really want to do. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, oh. yeah. Like, we've had video people being like, well, in five years, right. I'm going to be living in Hollywood and producing right. my own movies. Right. Okay, so you just need a paycheck until you get exactly. that figured out. <laughs> right. Or you're going to do that on the side, which is eventually going to take over, you know, into your current full-time job and your full-time job is going to be less productive and less quality because you're so focused on your side project that yeah, you, know, you just, yeah. All right. The last one, which, uh, you know, hasn't happened too much, but it's still pretty eye opening when it does happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this one, this one was kind of scary. We said, be, be patient with the process. Cause it is a process. Yeah. We're not spending all day, every day meeting and talking about like this job position. Like we got other things we're doing. The company's still moving forward. We all mm -hmm. got jobs to do. Right. So there's a lot. There's hundreds of people applying right. for like one position. Mm -hmm. There's all these interviews going on in different phases and spreadsheets and indeed right. keeping track of everything and assignments going out and coming in. Mm -hmm. And we had uh, somebody get really upset that the communication took like a week mm -hmm. to kind of get back to them. Right which I uh, thought was a little not patient with uh, the process. Right. And if that's communicated to in the interview or that, you know, we're in the middle of the interview process, we're right in the, hitting holidays and people are on mm -hmm. vacations, things happen. It's like right. a week's really not that long I, right. to get an answer on uh, what's next. Right. Some people wait months to hear back. Even if after applying, they wait months to even hear whether or not they've made it through like to the first round of interviews. Like, 
it, it happens everywhere. Everybody's busy. Every, you know, company has a whole lot going on. A, a job isn't the main thing or the only thing. Right. Also, if you've sent in your application via one platform, there's no need to send it via multiple other platforms. Just <laughs> just say it. It's not necessary. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, ha- we had our stuff on Indeed, and then we started getting resumes from the same person, mm-hmm. like through Facebook, Facebook, Instagram, Instagram, comments on Facebook, comments yeah. on Instagram, messages, and then, both. And then t- took it full-blown next level mm-hmm. by opening a new email and, and applying yeah. with that, too, which was still the same guy. Yeah. So that one, that one might be a... Uh, That's well, a stage <clears throat> five clinger. Yeah, stage like, five we, clinger for we sure. We don't... I don't you know. mess with those. <laughs> hey, you know, we're we're focusing here on on these ten mistakes that interviewees make, but we understand, you know, you're you're scoping us out too, right? You're not just walking in here like begging for a job. You want to see if this is a good fit for you, if you might like it here, um, you know, if it's the right culture for you, if you'd enjoy this job, mm-hmm. if there's potential for you to make more money or grow. So it's a two way street mm-hmm. for sure. And I'm sure there's things that we could uh, improve on too. Sure. But there is a lot of a lot of demand, and I think it's a good, a really good place to work. So we got a lot of jobs coming up, actually. So I'm going to throw some plugs out there. Yeah. Um, we'll probably post some under this podcast, but we got marketing jobs, video jobs, social media jobs, mm-hmm. careers really. And I think some of the perks of working here, which I'm practicing for some of my interviews later, because because <laughs> it's it's a two way street. I gotta mm-hmm. kind of sell people on. Why would you want to work here? We want to make a place where people love working here. They want to come to work. Some of the, some of the perks, you can share some of the ones you think, but we have a gym here at the office. So definitely Mm -hmm. working out is on, you don't like you're on the clock. You can just do that whenever you want. No one cares. Very Mm -hmm. flexible schedule, especially after COVID people started working from home a couple days a week and that Mm -hmm. worked out fine. Yeah. There's not like an exact start time at nine o'clock. Mm-hmm. You know, people kind of come in what time works for them. Right. And that all works as long as you're here for the different meetings and things you got to do. Right. Um, we do fun stuff too, right? Mm-hmm. Like we've gone out on yachts and boats and had meetings on those. We did, yeah. you were out of town for a conference, but we did a suite at the Bucks uh, Washington football team. Mm-hmm. Game. What other fun stuff have we done? We've done the we Tropicana the... Field for Christmas. Yeah, we did. Um... Zip lining at a place in Orlando. Oh, yeah. That was like a team building yeah. annual meeting thing. We like to mm-hmm. kind of go do something fun together for that. Go movies. Yeah. Someone's birthday. Like, we usually like, let's take a half day and yeah. just go relax. Right. So it's a, it's a fun place. It's pretty casual, mm-hmm. you know, but it's like strict at the same time, mm-hmm. I guess you'd say, because I'm pretty intense. <laughs> but, yeah. but at, at the same time, it's work hard, play hard. So right. we, we bust our butts, but then we celebrate. Right. When we hit team goals, you guys mm-hmm. get, don't you guys get like random bonuses just yeah. because we did really good on something? Yeah. So, and we're growing fast. I think we doubled profits this year. So there's mm-hmm. definitely room for like a build out of the team and we're kind of excited for what's coming next. Absolutely. So, you know, that's our, that's our plug on, we're trying to create an environment that's different where people want to want to work here they hear about it oh we did the thing to celebrate i don't know what it was uh revenue best revenue month ever Mm -hmm. and uh, me and chris rented exotic sports cars we got the mclaren and the ferrari and then you and tanya went shopping Mm -hmm. rented you a limo and you went to the outlets with what five hundred dollars each and that was just kind of a random uh thing we got to keep everybody's vibration up keep everyone excited and happy so it doesn't just become the rut you know right Going to work, going home every day, repeat. Right, <laughs> like, exactly. All right, so we got your top 10 mistakes to make. And just to reiterate, really, you don't have to, like, even blow the people away. Just mm-hmm. <laughs> just avoid these Ted COVID mistakes, which seems like a lot, but they're really kind of easy to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's That's like just, just care and try. Right. And you're going to be standing out over everybody else. Right. Yep. Know a little bit about the company. Yep. Show some interest. Do some research. Smile. Smile. Be on time. <laughs> Be on time. These are basic people. Yeah. Basic stuff. You learn the stuff in school. And and I'm not kidding. We're losing like 80% of the people on just these basic mm-hmm. things. Yeah. Like you just get through this, you're you're going to be a finalist. Yep. Yep. All right. If you found this episode helpful, 
please uh, share it with some colleagues, some friends, some family, and um, if we'd be honored and super pumped if you could just give us uh, a nice five-star review on your favorite podcast platform. That's what moves us up in the ranks. That's what gets more people finding out about the show, and this is just our way of giving back. We don't make any money off this podcast. We just like kind of, uh, instead of sharing this just with one person, this is a way to reach a lot more people with some of the things we've been learning. We hope you found it helpful. And we thank you for being a listener and tuning in. And we'll see you again next Wednesday. Thanks for your time, Samantha. Thank you. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Strong by Design podcast. If you found value in today's episode, please subscribe so that more people can find out about our show. Plus, you don't want to miss any future episodes with the amazing guests and topics we have lined up for you. Thank you.